This lecture is part of Berkeley Math 115, an introductory undergraduate course on number theory, and will be about the Kronecker symbol. So we've previously um, discussed the Legendre symbol, and which is written AB, and if you remember this tells you whether or not A is a quadratic residue of B, where B is a prime and is greater than zero. And we saw it was a bit inconvenient to have B restricted to being a prime, so we extended this to the Jacobi symbol, where B is now odd and positive. And we saw that it was very convenient to have a, this defined for non-prime values of B and made it much easier to evaluate, for example. And you can obviously ask the question, can you actually extend it to all integer values of B? And you can sort of do this using something called the Kronecker symbol, AB, which is defined for all, well, maybe all A and B, although um, actually there are rather good reasons for slightly restricting the, the values of A and B that you define it for. And we can define the Kronecker symbol as follows. If, um, if A and B, um, if, if B is non-zero, we can define it by saying AB is equal to the Legendre symbol for B prime and greater than zero. And then we have to define A2. And we define A2 to be this funny thing that's plus one for A congruent to plus or minus one mod seven, minus one for A congruent to plus or minus three, sorry, mod eight, uh, mod eight, and zero for A congruent to um, 0 mod 2. And then we define a minus 1 to be plus 1 if a is greater than 0 and minus 1 if a is less than 0. Actually, you can put greater than or equal to 0 there. And then we define it in general by saying a b1 b2 is equal to a b1 times a b2. So this defines it for, for all b. Uh, unless b is 0. If b is 0, then it's a bit messy. Um, in fact, what you do is you just sort of define 1, 0 to be equal to minus 1, 0, to be equal to 0, 1, to be equal to 0, minus 1, to be 1, and naught b is equal to a naught, to is equal to 0 otherwise. Um, however, this does give problems, as we will see a little bit later. Um, so what properties does this have? Well, first of all, um, just like the Jacobian and the genre symbol, A, B is plus or minus 1 if A and B are co-prime, and naught if they're not co-prime. Um, secondly, um, we get some sort of periodicity pro properties. If A is congruent to 0 or 1 mod 4, then it's periodic in the denominator, so A of B plus N A um, is equal to A B. Um, if A is 2 mod 4, then we get um, period 4A. And if A is congruent to 3 mod 4, what we get is a mess. Um, for this reason, the classical Kronecker symbol um, was sometimes only defined when A is congruent to 0 or 1 mod 4 and b is, is, is greater than zero. And th th this avoids a few of the minor complications we're going to see later. Um, and the Kronecker symbol is also multiplicative. So a1, a2, b is equal to a1, b, a2, b, and um, a, b1, b2 is equal to a, b1 times a, b2. Except, unfortunately, this isn't quite true. This only holds for a and b being non-zero. If a and b are zero, it actually breaks down a little bit because you've got zero minus one times minus one minus one is not equal to minus one zero times minus one because this is plus one and this is minus one and this is plus one. And there doesn't seem to be any really good way to fix this. You might say you could make this equal to plus one, but that would cause other things to go wrong. Um, basically, the um, may, there's a strong case for just restricting the Kronecker symbol to at least um, 
at least B being positive. As we'll see later, there's no actual reason for, for taking B to be um, negative. <coughs> then we have a sort of version of quadratic reciprocity. <coughs> this says that AB is equal to plus or minus BA, where this sign is given as follows. First of all, we take minus 1, a prime minus 1 over 2 times b prime minus 1 over 2, just as for the Legendre symbol, except here a prime and b prime are the odd parts of a and b. And we also have to multiply it by minus 1 if a and b are both less than 0. So as you see from this, the quadratic reciprocity um, formula for the Kronecker symbol is actually a bit of a mess. And the best thing to do is to use only for a and b odd and positive. And then it just becomes the usual Legendre quadratic reciprocity rule um, where, you, where you get this is times minus 1 to the a minus 1 over 2 times b minus 1 over 2. Um, um, this means that we can, in fact, evaluate the Kronecker symbol just as fast as the Jacobi symbol and to do that, you just turn the Kronecker symbol into the Jacobi symbol. What you do is you take out the factors of 2 and minus 1 from the numerator and denominator, so you can reduce the case when a and b are odd and positive, and then it's just a Jacobi symbol, so we can just evaluate it in the, in the, in the usual way. Um, next, um, we can give a, a, a little table of the... Um, Kronecker symbol and also the Jacobi symbol and the Legendre symbol. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these to be the zero values of x and y. So, so on this row we, we have x zero which is just a load of zeros except we have to remember to have a couple of ones there and x1 just is even more boring because it's just ones absolutely everywhere and then an x2 is this funny thing that is a, a, a one if something is plus or minus one mod eight and so on so um we get it goes back like this and then it goes back the other way and then x3 is easy because this just has period of three. It just goes 0, 1, minus 1, 0, 1, minus 1, 0, 1, minus 1, and so on. Now, um, this row here does not have period 2. It only has period 8. Um, so let's mark in blue the rows that have nice periodicity. So this is period 1. That's nice. That's nice. This doesn't have nice periodicity, it only has period 8, but that is period 3. And then x4 um, is actually even easier. This is period 2, it just goes 1 minus 1 everywhere. Um, sorry, it oscillates 1 and 0. So this also has nice periodicity. And x5 is period 5, and it goes 0, 1 minus 1, minus 1, 1, 0, 1, and so on. Um, and I'm not going to do any more because this is getting a little bit uninteresting. But what I can do is, is we can mark um, which of these are values of the Legendre symbol and which are values of the Jacobi symbol and which are values of the... Um, 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 Kronecker symbol. So the um, Legendre symbol only works if the denominators are prime. So we get these ones here, and we get these ones here, and then we get the ones for seven, and and so on. Um, so here, this is Legendre symbol, and then the Jacobi symbol. Um, we get some extra ones, um, so we would also get these ones here, so we'd get all odd numbers. So here we'd have Jacobi's symbol, and we'd also have ones for 9, so um, 
the Jacobi symbol are these ones and also the ones we get for the Legendre symbol. The classical Chronica symbol um, are the, cover the values given in purple. They're the ones that are 0 or 1 mod 4. Um, so we get these ones here and so on. So this, this, this purple is classical Chronica rather than the full chronic symbol. And now let's take a quick look at what happens um, um, down here. So x minus 1 um, has a lot of minus 1s, then a 1, and then um, a lot of 1s. And at this point, we should point out that two of these values are kind of rather dubious. So these values here are definitely somewhat icky. And you, you shouldn't really use them because they, 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 they cause things to be non-multiplicative and so on. Um, anyway, we can get x minus 2 just by... Um, we have to take x2 and multiply the uh, this bit by minus 1 and this bit by plus 1. So we, we get um, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0 here. And... Um, this one we just multiply by 1, so we get 1, 0, minus 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, and so on. Um, and for x minus 3, um, again, we, we, we take this row and we multiply it by um, minus 1, so we get 1, minus 1, 0, 1, minus 1, 0, 1, minus 1, and so on. Um, and... Um, so we should continue marking in some rows and columns with nice periodicity. So this one also has nice periodicity. If we look at which columns have nice periodicity, we see that, um, that, that they have nice periodicity for, for the classical chronic symbol. And um, otherwise they tend not to. In fact, if you look at this one, this column here, for example, it's really rather a mess. Um, so blue is the ones that have period... Um, periodicity we expect. So the, the nth column should have period n and, and, and so on, except sometimes it doesn't. Um, and uh, let's just remind ourselves that here we get minus 1, 0 times minus 1, minus 1 is not equal to minus 1, 0. So that's that's really bad. Um, so um, what can you actually use this extended Kronika symbol for? Um, well, um, um, one of the things it's used for is the Dirichlet L series of an imaginary quadratic field. So a typical imaginary quadratic field would be Z with the integers I adjoined, where I squared is equal to minus 1, so this would be all numbers of the form M plus NI. And an imaginary quadratic field has an invariant called its discriminant, which I'm not going to define now. I'll just say um, it's denoted by D, and the discriminant for um, the, the ring of Gaussian integers turns out to be minus 4. And then the, 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 the Kronika symbol, um, D, um, P, um, where d um, is congruent to 0 or 1 mod 4. So, so the discriminant is always congruent to 0 or 1 mod 4. This is where the condition being 0 or 1 mod 4 in the definition of the chronic symbol originally came from. Um, here, for p, an odd prime. Um, so this tells you how the prime decomposes in this imaginary quadratic field. So this is equal to plus 1 if um, p splits as a product of two distinct primes in in um in the imaginary quadratic field for example um five is equal to two plus i times two minus i so um um it's equal to minus one if p does not split so if we take the prime 3, you can't factor it anymore in the Gaussian integers. And we get naught if P 
and becomes the square of something. So so here we have two squared is equal to two is equal to one plus i squared times the unit minus i. So the Kronecker symbol tells you how primes um, decompose in imaginary quadratic fields. As I said, for this, you only need the denominator to be positive and you only need the numerator to be 0 or minus 1 mod 4. And if you stick to this case, it gets rid of uh, much of the rather unpleasant behaviour of the Kronecker symbol. Um, we can also use this to define um, the, the Dirichlet L series of an imaginary quadratic field. And this is defined to be um, sum over n of dn times um, 1 over n to the s. And I think what I'll do is I'll just give an example for the Gaussian integers. So here we're going to take d equals minus 4, and we're going to take the Gaussian integers m plus ni and try and figure out what this is. Well, here dn goes 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, minus 1, and so on. So our L series um, is equal to 1 over 1 to the s, minus 1 over 3 to the s, plus 1 over 5 to the s, minus 1 over 7 to the s, and so on. And now you can see this L series actually factorizes, so it's 1 over 1 plus 3 to the minus s times 1 over 1 minus 5 to the minus s times 1 over 1 plus 7 to the minus s times 1 over 1 plus 11 to the minus s and so on. So this is a product over all primes of 1 over 1 minus pi of p times p to the minus s, where pi of p is just this um, Kronecker symbol dp, which in our case is just minus 4p. So this is rather like the factorization of the Riemann zeta function, except we've got this, this sort of extra sign in. Um, and I'll just give um, an application of this. Um, we'll be seeing more of this, um, quite a lot more of this later. If we take L of s times zeta of s, this is actually gives us something called the zeta function of the imaginary quadratic field, if we multiply these two together. Um, then um, um, this is can, can be ri written as, um, well, well, here this L series is 1 over 1 plus 3 to minus s, 1 over 1 minus 5 to minus s, and so on. And the, the zeta function is 1 over 1 minus 3 to minus s, 1 over 1 minus 5 to the minus s, and so on. So if you multiply them together, we get a factor of 1 over 1 minus 2 to the minus s times 1 over 1 minus 3 minus 2s times 1 over 1 minus 5 to the minus s squared times 1 over 1 minus 7 to 2s times 1 over 1 minus 11 to the minus 2s and so on. And this is what happens when p is congruent to 3 mod 4. And this is what happens when p is congruent to 1 mod 4. And this is the, the, the leftover case when p is even. Well, what can we do with this? Well, um, what we do is we notice that zeta of s becomes infinite at s equals 1, as we remember. On the other hand, L of s um, at s equals 1 is equal to 1 minus a third plus a fifth minus a seventh and so on. So this is actually finite and non-zero. In fact, if you remember Leibniz's formula, it's actually equal to pi over 4, although we, we don't need that. Anyway, what this means is that this product is infinite at um, s equals 1, because that's, that, that, that's non-zero and this is infinite. So what this means is that this product um, must be infinite. And if we look at some of the terms, the product of all these terms um, is finite and um, non-zero. 
it's a fairly easy estimate. And this is obviously finite and non-zero. So that means the product of all the remaining terms. Um, so the product over p is congruent to 1 mod 4 of 1 over 1 minus p to the minus s squared is infinite. So the number of primes p congruent to 1 mod 4 must be infinite. So um, using this funny L series constructed from the Kronecker um, symbol, um, can actually be used to show the number of primes that are congruent to 1 mod 4 is infinite. Um, this is the basic idea underlying Dirichlet, the proof of Dirichlet's theorem, Dirichlet's theorem about primes in arithmetic progression that we will be um, giving later on in a few lectures' time. Um, okay, so um, next lecture we'll be um, taking a look at, at binary quadratic forms.